Hey guys, welcome back to week five of the Bomber Budget Build. Last week we came in and installed a set of the Vanquish One Piece Lower Trailing Arms in this car. After I got those installed, I did get a chance to take this thing out and do some running. I was actually running it in front of the house, jumping from the curb into the river rock, actually made for some pretty good video. But at the same time, I ran it harder than I initially told myself I was going to, and I did end up blowing that servo out. Now, we expected that. Uh, I was running it quite hard, jumping it into some really nasty terrain, which I've got a little bit of uh, footage to show you guys of. Now, I don't have the servo that I plan to replace it with yet. I'm going to get that here. I hope to have it for the next episode. Uh, so I'm going to bypass the servo episode and we're going to go on to something new this week. So instead of installing the new servo, this week what we're going to do is we're going to replace the lockers in both the front and rear axles. Now, the lockers that come with the bomber here are a centered metal design, and they run inside of that plastic diff cup. Now, I have actually yet to tear those lockers out of this axle. It's not uncommon for those things to blow up pretty quickly when you're running a big brushless system like we've got in this car right now. Uh, if you're not running a big brushless system, they'll last a little while longer, but typically they do fail over time when running a 2.2 size tire especially. So we're going to get in there and we're going to replace that two piece system with a one piece spool. Now a spool or locker, whichever way you want to call it, a spool is typically referred to as a one piece unit. It actually bolts right to the gear, then the shafts engage into it. A locker is normally something that you would put inside of a diff case. That's why there's two different terminologies that are used there, uh, specifically in RC, that doesn't necessarily carry over 100% over to the full-size world. But what we are going to install is the Incision RC one-piece spool setup. Now this is a chromoly hardened one-piece spool uh, that's got a black oxide coating. These incision spools were actually the very first product we released from the brand Incision, and they came in at a great price. These things are under 20 bucks each, so perfect for this. They're definitely gonna hold up. They're made of nice, high-quality stuff, and uh, we're gonna throw them in this car, and they should last forever. So I'm gonna tear down the axles in this. We're gonna go through the installation. I'm also going to inspect those lockers that are in there just to see if the ears on the outside of that locker have began to fail. So I'm gonna start by tearing into the rear axle on this car, and we're gonna get this installation underway. As always, the first step to this process is removing the wheels and tires. Next, we need to remove the lockouts or C-hubs by removing the screw on the top and bottom of the axle. For the rear axle, you can simply slide the lockouts out. You don't need to fully remove them. For the front, it's just as easy to completely remove them. Remove the four screws holding the diff cover onto the axle. Four more screws secure the ring and pinion in place. Remove the four screws and the bearing caps will come right out. Next, the four 2mm screws that secure the diff cup to the ring gear can be removed and then you can separate the diff cup from the ring gear. Inside of that diff cup you'll see the stock axial locker. This one turned out to be in just fine condition after all the beating we put it through. One thing to note is that you will need to remove the paper gasket from the stock ring gear. That is not needed for the new locker. Seat the spool onto the ring gear. Start all four of the screws first before beginning to tighten them all down. Then tighten them evenly around to make sure that everything seats nice and even. Replace the bearing from the stock diff cup onto the new incision spool. 
Reinstall the ring gear and locker into the axle. Make sure that you note which side the ring gear goes on in the axle as it can go either way. Reseat the axle shafts into the spool and then begin to retighten the bearing caps. At this time you should be able to make sure that everything is spinning nice and freely. Replace the screws on the top and bottom of either the lockout or C hub. Replace the diff cap and replace the four screws securing it into place. Replace the wheels and tires and that will wrap up the installation of the spool. Installation of a one piece spool is a pretty simple process. To do the front, exact same thing except there's more stuff in the way to film. So that's why I showed you guys the rear, but the front is just as easy to tackle. So at this point, we're five weeks into this build, started to get some good upgrades in there. I put a good amount of runtime on it. It's going to start holding up to the abuse that I plan to put this thing through with the exception of that servo, but we will get to that soon. Now, some of the other things, just impressions at this time with this much runtime on it to see what's going on if we can foresee other things that are going to need to be handled um, or just how things are holding up in general. Now, uh, as far as the axles go, we've got the one piece lockers in there. That's really the weakest point of the axle usually with a 2.2 size tire. Um, the dog bones up front are still holding up fine at this point. The rear shafts are still straight. The only thing that you really normally see with rear axial shafts is bending of those axles. Uh, the Yeti is the worst at it because it uses a little bit wider offset, puts a good amount of leverage on those axles pretty common to bend those. So far, so good on this car. Um, the tires are doing well. I'm impressed with them out of the box, how they're hooking up, uh, how they are to drive. They don't give you that feel of a hard, ready to run tire like the old Wraiths did or things like that. So I am impressed with the tires. They're not their stickiest version of a tire, but uh, for a ready to run tire, pretty impressed. Um, and I'm pleased with them at this point, so they'll stay on the build for a little while longer. One thing that I have noticed so far, though, is that they have started to uh, de-bead from the wheel. So at this point, a good set, a quality set of beadlock wheels is not in the budget yet. We've got a few other things that we've definitely got to handle first. Uh, but a good set of beadlock wheels would be nice to get on this car. Uh, for now, we're gonna have to do some tire gluing to keep these things in place and keep ourselves uh, running true with these tires uh, mounted properly to this uh, set of wheels. The really important things like links and drive shafts we're going to be set on. I don't foresee ever having to change those out for anything. They are going to be solid. The transmission in this car is bone stock at this point still, which is a great sign. Axial's never had a transmission in a solid axle car like this that could take this type of abuse out of the box, especially remembering that I have that Tekken Pro 4 HD in this car and it's handling it no problem. Fantastic sign, an awesome, awesome upgrade to a car like this uh, right out of the box from Axial. All of these points just add up to one big statement, and that is that Axial's really put out a very nice car with this bomber. There is small hurdles. The links are soft. The servo gives out when you really beat on it hard. Um, those are the major things, though, with this car. Other than that, it's, gonna, it's a great car, and I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. This is actually going to be one of the more difficult budget builds for totally different reasons uh, than I had with the SCX-10 Deadbolt or the Poison Spider Wraith. Um, I'm going to be looking for things, I think, to change on this car rather than fixing things to change it on this car. So um, it's, it's a refreshing deal. I, by all means, have loved all of my Axial cars, but this is a very different car than they've put out so far. So uh, I'm extremely happy with this thing, and I'm really looking forward to where this car is going to go. Uh, I've been sitting, thinking, and planning on what is going to be the next upgrade or the next upgrade after that, and uh, it's definitely a whole different thing than what I've dealt with uh, with the budget builds before. But by all means, that doesn't mean that I won't find a million things to keep continuing this budget build series. Uh, there's always parts to change, either for looks, for style, for strength, the things that haven't broken yet but could in the future, and I will find them, and this series will be fun to continue because 
being that this car is doing well just means I'm going to push it even further. And uh, with that, I really think that this series is gonna turn out to be a lot of fun. Speaking of having a ton of fun with this car, Go check out ckrchobbies.com. They're the ones that got me a great deal on this bomber. And to help show my appreciation, go check out their website, see if there's anything there that they can help you with. So with the installation of the spools completed for this week, hopefully our servo comes next week and I can go over what my thoughts are on this new servo that I'm gonna try in this car. But with that guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on week six.